Welcome to Math Movies with Ms. Foyer-Beck and Ms. Valuti. Today we will be practicing how to write equations to represent situations, and we'll be using order of operations to do so. Use grouping symbols to write an equation that represents the situation. Then solve the problem. A family of two adults and three kids are going to the movies. An adult ticket costs $9.00. Child ticket costs six dollars. How much will the family need to buy movie tickets? Okay, when I think about this, I know that an adult ticket is nine dollars and that there are two adults that are going. And it says that a child ticket is six dollars and there are three kids that are going. So that's the information I have so far. I also know that I need to find out the cost for adults plus the cost for kids and that's going to equal my total. So adults. There are two adults and each of them is going to cost nine dollars for their ticket. So that means that I have two groups of nine and that's for the adults. And that for the kids I have three groups of six. So I think that in order to make this work I need to add those together. So if I put parentheses around two times nine and I put parentheses around three times six and I add them together that's going to equal my total. And so this equation would represent this problem. And now if I solve, I get 2 times 9 is 18, so it costs $18 for the adults, plus 3 times 6 is 18, so it costs $18 for the kids, and all together it would cost $36 for this family to go to the movies. Um, I am going to put parentheses around the 2 times 9 and around the 3 times 6, even though order of operations says that I would be doing multiplication first, no matter what, I think that it just makes it clearer which ones are the adults and which ones are the kids. Um, you could also write it as 2 times 9 plus 3 times 6 equals blank, and your equation would still be equals, I should say, 36, and your equation would still be correct because you'd still be doing multiplication first no matter what according to order of operations. Let's try another one. Ms. Valuti made a photo book with pictures from her trip to Spain. She put six pictures on each page. So that means that a page in her book would look like this with one, two, three, four, five, six pictures. She filled eight pages with pictures from Sevilla, nine pages with pictures from Madrid. So we know Sevilla equals eight pages, and Madrid equals nine pages. So now I need to write an equation that shows how many pictures are in her photo book. So that would be like Sevilla plus Madrid equals blank. Okay, so... There's actually more than one way that I could do this. So let's think about one option. I know that there are six pictures on a page and she has eight pages for Sevilla with six pictures on a page. So that would be like eight times six. Plus she can add the pages for Madrid and that would be like nine pages with six pictures on each page. That would be like nine groups of six. So one option is to do eight times six plus 9 times 6, and this is an equation, so I do need to have an equal sign and a blank. So let's see what would happen if I solve that. I would solve what's in the parentheses first, so on the Sevilla pages, 8 times 6 is 48, plus 9 times 6 is 54, so if I add 48 plus 54 together, 40 plus 50 is 90, and 8 plus 4 is 12, 90 plus 12 is 102, so I would get 102 pictures. Now, there's another option. Because she is 
having six pictures on each page, no matter where they are from, I could figure out how many pages there are. So eight pages for Sevilla plus nine pages for Madrid. And if each of those pages has six pictures, that would be like that many pages times six to show that each page has six photos on it equals blank. Let's see what happens if I do that. 8 plus 9 would be 17, which would mean that she has 17 total pages, and on each page she's putting 6 photos. So 17 groups of 6. Well, 10 times 6 is 60, and 7 times 6 is 42, and 60 plus 42 is 102. So no matter what, we know that she is going to be having 102 total pictures in her photo book. These two equations mean the same exact thing, it's just two different ways of representing the situation. As you can see, you need to think a little bit about the story problem and what's happening in the story problem in order to help you write the equation and think about what operations are involved, but then you also need to think about how grouping symbols could impact your solution. I hope you learned a lot today. Thanks so much for watching.